Whenever I'm going on a trip, especially if I've never been there before, I'm going to use my map program to help guide me to get there. And the cool thing about it is that it shows where the high traffic areas are, construction, accidents, and maybe even the occasional speed trap. And they can also suggest changes to my route to avoid those problems. And you need the same kind of map for your cloud applications. Now the cloud has changed the way that the world approaches applications. Back in the day, we had large single servers that did everything from the database to the app tier and the web front end. And over time, we moved to smaller distributed servers that each handled a part of the program. And now we have these serverless services and functions that are dispersed over multiple resource types and could be spread into multiple regions and stretch back to on-prem. And this creates some new challenges, like making it harder to see the application as a whole, which makes tracking down problems much more difficult. Did the failure happen in the logic app or was it the function? Nope, I bet it was DNS. It's always DNS. And it would make your life so much easier if you had a map that you could follow. And if that map was smart enough to direct you right to the problem and how to fix it. And this is where our friends at Serverless 360 sponsored this video on distributed tracing. Here in your dashboard, you can see all of your applications at a single glance. And if you click on one of them, you can see the entire map of your application, no matter how many twists and turns through the resources you have to take. And the best part is when you have speed traps or traffic jams, you can see those accidents in your map. Just click on the red resource to see what's wrong, and you'll also see some suggestions on how to resolve them. And you can even submit those jobs for reprocessing once you fix the problems right from one interface, which makes supporting your cloud apps super easy no matter where they are. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, why would you use something like this when you can get all that same data out of Azure? And I was asking myself the same thing, and then I tried to do it. The first problem I had was that Azure is a resource provider, not a map for applications. I can see all of the different components of the app, but not a map that shows me the whole app or the data flow. But since I own the app, I should know what resources are involved and I should know the data flow, so I can just click through all the different resources and dig into their logs until I track down the issue, which would take too long if I was having a problem that needed to be fixed right now. So instead, I could set up something like alerts and use Log Analytics or App Insights. So here's an App Insight that I have set up for another app, and you can have a whole lot of data in here, like the list of the resources in the app, you could set up app dashboards, you can look at the failures, search through the transactions, and that's all great. But you have to create it all yourself, which means now you need to know app insights on top of the resources and your applications. Oh, and you'll also need agents, SDKs, or libraries, depending on the resources and what you're doing, just to get distributed tracing enabled. And then you'll need to know how to monitor each one of the resources and plug them in together so that you can make App Insights do what you need it to do for your application. And on top of all of that, you'll need the permission to manage all of those Azure resources, which could be a security issue, especially if you have third parties or less experienced people who support your apps. But let's say that you went and did all of that. Now you need to get a failed job reprocessed. And this is gonna be a lot of work too. You need to dig through those resources to gather all of the relevant data points and then hope that you found the right function or logic app or whatever your app happens to need so that you can directly inject that data for reprocessing, which means, again, your support folks will need access into the Azure portal. But in Serverless 360, you don't need any of that. You just add all of your resources in your app together and define your business process flow. Then you can click the Edit Transaction Flow link over there, and now you can right-click on your flow and select Configure Properties. These are the key values that need to be tracked as the message flows through the stages, giving you distributed tracing for your applications across all the different services. And once your apps are built and put into production, it's generally found that 90% of the failures that you'll see are just during data processing which means that your support folks only need to look here for the red stage in the flow. They click on it, 
They read the exception code and the details to figure out what happened and what they need to do to resolve the issue. And once that's fixed, they just need to click that reprocessing job button right there and you're done. So it's up to you. Build App Insights monitoring and alerting and give a bunch of folks access into Azure, which means of course you'll need more highly skilled folks to support those Azure resources. Or you could just use something like Serverless 360 that keeps everything secure and builds your map of your application in one place so that you can easily find issues and fix them and your support teams won't need to be those highly skilled Azure experts, which will keep your Azure resources secure and your costs down. So it's up to you. And you know what else is up to you? Learning more about how Serverless 360 could help you out right over here. And happy learning.